Hello. Today I want to talk about the Tesla Semi and some issues that it may possibly have. Um, how Tesla may address some of those issues and some things they haven't addressed yet. Um, the first thing is the weight. Um, you hear a lot of people saying that it's going to be an extremely heavy truck and the battery is going to weigh so much. I'm starting to think that it might not weigh as much as people think. Um, first, we've already had a company come out and say that the Tesla Semi is going to weigh about as much as a regular truck. And this one's 19, somewhat lighter, but um, 19 is about average for a day cab. Um, some trucks can go well into the 20s. So if we assume it's a 900 kilowatt hour battery, and they use the 18650 cells found in the Model S, which they aren't going to use, they could get the battery in at under 11,000 pounds. In a diesel truck, if you think about the engine, the transmission, the drive shaft, the fuel tanks, all of the oil and the fuel in the tanks, and all those parts that aren't gonna be necessary in the Tesla Semi, and also, if you look at the shape of the Tesla Semi as compared to um, the truck that was pulling it on the flatbed that day. Um, it's, it's a much smaller truck than, than most trucks are. Um, and I think that they'll be able to shave at least eight, maybe even 9,000 pounds off of the truck just in parts that they don't need. Another thing I want to try to figure out is how much weight they're saving with the 2170 batteries. And I think something that could give us an idea of that is comparing the S75 to the long range Model 3, which also is supposed to have a 75 kilowatt hour battery. This won't be completely accurate. I believe the Model S75 kilowatt hour battery is actually 72 kilowatt hours. And the Model 3's um, battery is a little over 75 kilowatt hours. So, if anything, the numbers will come out a little conservative. So that Model S weighs 4,469 pounds, and the Model 3 weighs 3,700 pounds. That's a difference of 769 pounds, or 17%. Um, uh, for a fair comparison, I also want to look at the size, like the, the footprint of the cars, looking at the length and the width of them. The Model S takes up just over 15,000 square inches, and the Model 3 takes up just over 13,000 square inches. So the Model 3 is 17% lighter, but only 11% smaller. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, and I think a lot of that is gonna be the difference in the battery pack. We also know the Model 3 uses more steel than the Model S, so that could be an area where more weight savings could have happened. So the numbers are gonna be possibly even more conservative. So if Tesla can also achieve roughly a 6% decrease in weight, which is a conservative number, I think that they can get the weight of the battery down under 10,000 pounds. I think they'll have about eight or 9,000 pounds to build the rest of the truck. Now this part is gonna be a little bit reckless speculation. I wanted to have some numbers to back it up, but it's really hard to compare because there aren't really any electric trucks out there that's trying to do what Tesla's doing. So I wanted to try to figure out a way to compare diesel cars and diesel trucks to an electric car and an electric truck. And the best one I can find was a Jaguar XE 2.0D, which averages 42 miles per gallon on the highway. And I'm gonna be comparing that to a Freightliner Cascadia, which on a good day would average 7.7 .7 miles per gallon on the highway. And I'm only looking at highway, I'm being conservative again because I know the electric drivetrain will greatly outperform the diesel one in city type driving so I, th I thought it would be a little more fair to just use highway so based on those numbers the Cascadia uses 5.45 more gallons of fuel to travel one mile as compared to that Jaguar now my Model S when I'm on the highway and conditions are good or decent I'll average around 300 watt hours per mile. Multiply that times 5.45 and you will get 1,636 watt hours per mile or 1.636 kilowatt hours per mile, which could put the Tesla Semi right in line to having an 800 kilowatt hour battery. Now I told you that was reckless speculation. 
I don't have a background in engineering and I fully expect someone to be in the comments and explain to me why that doesn't make any sense and why I probably oversimplified that. Another thing I've heard a lot about for the Tesla Semi that could be a problem is reliability and service. I don't think that's gonna be something to worry about. The Tesla Semi is gonna be using the same motors from the Model 3, which will have been out for several years and they will have ironed out any of the problems with those motors. So they'll have service centers and mobile service units all over that are familiar with working on those motors. Also, like with any other electric vehicle compared to a gas or diesel powered vehicle, it's gonna be a lot less complex. We were talking about going from hundreds of moving parts to a handful of moving parts. Okay, so now let's talk about mega charging. I hear a lot about mega charging and some things that could cause problems for Tesla and the Tesla Semi in that regard. So. When am I gonna stop and mega charge? When am I gonna have time to do that? That's gonna cut into my hours of service. I think all mega charging will take place during your 30 minute break. Like I'm on my 30 minute break right now. I also think mega charging will happen when the truck is being loaded and unloaded and you're just sitting there waiting. Now here's the tricky one that I think they, they haven't completely answered yet. Where will the mega charging be? I personally think it's gonna be almost exclusively at distribution centers, and Tesla will just work deals with places that have those large warehouses. The reason I think that is the roof of those large buildings is about the amount of space you would need to have room for solar to power a mega charger. Um, a lot of people think the mega charging will be at truck stops. I kinda of disagree with that. I'm at a truck stop right now, and the only place that you could really put the amount of solar you would need out here is you would have to make a like a roof for the trucks to drive under and I can't imagine how bad the air quality would be if all these trucks were idling and the fumes were kind of just building up in that area even if it was open the air quality is bad right now if I just went out there I think Tesla could make their own truck stops and in that case, if only Teslas were allowed in there, then it wouldn't be a problem for the trucks to just park underneath solar arrays. Okay, so that truck stop started to get a little noisy. I think truck stops will get destination chargers. I don't think they've said anything about the destination chargers needing to be powered by solar. And I think a slower charger, as long as it could get the truck charged in the 10 hour break, would be fine at a truck stop. But that's something that's probably further into the future because the Tesla Semi currently doesn't have a, a sleeper. And without a sleeper, there isn't much sense in taking a 10 hour break at a truck stop. Another thing I hear is what about the time it will take to charge if you had to wait in line to charge? And I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I believe when the Tesla Semi is first released, the companies that buy it are gonna use it for their sub 500 mile routes and they'll just charge it at their home office. And I'm sure that just like with the Model S, X, and 3, Tesla will sell the semi with a charging cable and everything that's needed so the companies don't have to rely on the mega charger network, which will probably take some time to build out. With the mega chargers, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla announced partnerships with some of these companies with the large distribution centers and warehouses where they could lease the roof space and have a place to put their solar panels, maybe in exchange for a lower charging rate for those companies. And they probably would have to agree to let other Tesla semis that are from other companies charge at their location. Um, the next concern that I hear a lot about is the safety of the lithium ion batteries. This kind of confuses me because electric cars are like five times less likely to catch fire in an accident. The truck also supposedly prevents jackknives, which we'll have to talk about a lot more in another video. The next concern I hear a lot about is that self-driving trucks will kill jobs. First, so far it's not really being marketed as a self-driving truck. Um, I see the enhanced autopilot as more of a driver assist feature. I think it'll be a very long time before we see these trucks drive themselves for companies just available for purchase without a driver in the truck can do a pickup and a delivery with no human input i think that's i think that's extremely far away and i don't feel like i'm being pessimistic i'm just looking at what autopilot 2.0 can do and 
it can like sort of park itself sometimes without without hitting anything it can stay in the lines as long as nothing crazy happens um it does fine on major divided highways but for a truck that's just the easy part right now autopilot 2.0 isn't reading speed limit signs we did just get the automatic wipers which is kind of connected to the vision systems i'm thinking that it'll start reading speed limit signs soon the tesla semi would not only have to read speed limit signs but it'll also have to read low clearance signs and weight limit signs and other signs like that that pertain to trucks And it'll have to be able to react before it gets too far and someone has to take over. That being said, I do think that it could two days drive itself on the highway. Um, I think Elon said they have the technology right now to do the platooning. But I think other than that, I think it's a lot further off than some people think. One thing I would like to see is how they're going to transport the Tesla Semi. Um... Most trucks are transported in the, what's called a piggyback style. We have the front of one truck on the back of the truck in front of it. And you can move four trucks at a time if you count the truck that's in the front pulling the other three trucks. And that's the most efficient way to get four trucks to a customer. I actually picked up a Uber passenger who did just that. He delivers trucks including the one that he's driving so he leaves everything at the dealership he calls an uber and he gets a ride to the bus station and he goes somewhere and gets a new load of trucks so my concern is the tesla semi will have the same motors as the model 3 and the model 3 like all the other teslas as far as i know have to be told on a flatbed the model 3 owner's manual says that the Model 3 can't be towed with the wheels touching the ground. It says it could cause damage, and I'm pretty sure it means damage to the motor. So unless Tesla modifies this, the most they'd ever be able to ship in, in one shipment is two at a time. And when you're getting orders of 50 and 100 and 150, that could be a little inconvenient. Um, I think there is a good chance that they will modify this. I mean, if not, the bottleneck, the production bottleneck, could end up being a shipping bottleneck. Thank mm -hmm. you.